All right, hey, Brian here. Um, I wanted to put out a quick video talking about the different financing options and insurance options on a camper. We see this question come up on every Facebook group multiple times a week, people asking this. So I thought I'd put out a video explaining this. So, all right, just so you know, I am a licensed property and casualty agent for the past 15 years. I'm also a licensed mortgage professional. I deal with finance. I deal with uh, interest loans, simple interest loans, financing, everything. So. That's where my background goes to give this advice. Uh, one of the common misconceptions is, uh, and one of the problems I see a lot of people do is, as far as insurance, they don't have the right insurance on their camper. If you are a full-time camper, there is a special full-time policy. Um, that policy is written different. It's written a lot like a homeowner's policy. It has medical payments on it. It has an extra liability coverage. It can have contents coverage on it much like a house. Now, as of the moment I'm making this video, there's only about five companies that will write an actual full-timers policy. Progressive, Foremost, National General, which is also known as Good Sam, Geico, and I've heard Allstate. Uh, I talked to an Allstate rep, he says they will, they, they do honor that. Now, I see people on there saying all the time, well, I have State Farm and they do it, and I've they do not. I have talked to the State Farm's underwriter. They do not offer a full-time policy. So I don't care if your agent tells you you have coverage. If it's not written on your policy that it is a full-time coverage, you do not have it. I'm going to put an example of what that goes below. I'm going to list those, those five companies below for you as well. Um, if you if you're a weekend camper and you need coverage, a lot of times you can add it onto your auto policy. There's some people, some auto policies that don't do that. A lot of times the weekend coverage in the camper policy um, does not include contents. So keep that in mind. So how it works is anytime that camper is attached to your vehicle, you're going down the road, the liability extends from the vehicle to the camper, but it does not cover the camper itself unless you have the camper insured and it does not cover the contents unless you specifically have them mentioned. And as far as insurance goes, if you if you um, have an older camper, especially when you fix it up is a little nicer, there's two kinds of coverage. There's one called stated coverage, which means, hey, I'm gonna say it's worth twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Now, the problem with just having a stated coverage is if if you have you put some money into it and you think it's worth twenty thousand dollars, but you actually wreck it and they look at the make and model and and even some improvements, they're still going to depreciate that stated value and they might not give you 20000 They might say, no, it's only worth fourteen. So then that's when you want what's called an agreed upon value, which means you and the insurance company are agreeing that if you total this or if it's a total loss, this is the value that this camper is worth. Those will not be depreciated. Or, hang on down, that's just a, a flat out value. So you can say, hey, I want to agree that this is 20000 They typically want to see some pictures, model numbers, and uh, maybe an appraisal sometimes, and they will do that. Another important thing, especially if you're buying a new camper, you always want to have either what's called gap insurance or full replacement cost coverage insurance. And it's the same thing, it's just two different names for it. The dealership will try to sell you gap insurance. Guys, it, it, it is insurance, it, it will cover it, but it's usually really expensive. Typically, you can add that endorsement on to your progressive or foremost or national general policy for 30 or 40 bucks a year instead of paying six to 900 bucks for it in the dealer and financing it in. It's much smarter just to pay it in there because then if you sell the camper in two years or three years, then you, you're only paying for the years you have it. But make sure you have that on there. It's really important because when you buy that new camper, a lot of times you drive it off the lot, it's gonna lose five, $7,000 in value. If you wreck it three weeks later, they're not gonna to want to give you full value with it unless you have that endorsement on there. So make sure that's really important. Now, as far as financing goes, um, these things are considered recreational vehicles. Some banks can do them as personal loans. Some banks will will almost do a mortgage type loan on it. It just depends on the bank. Some credit unions and some banks look at them just like a vehicle. They'll give you a five or six, seven year loan on it. Um, some banks will go up to 20 years on these, depending on how much you borrow and the value of it. Um, and the interest is tax deductible as long as you spend 30 days a year in that camper. It's classified as a second home or in, in your primary residence. As long as you spend 30 days a year in it, the interest can be tax deductible 
if, if all the other criteria is met for, you know, itemizing your deductions. So keep that in mind. There are special loans for full-time RVers. There are a couple banks out there that will do it. You typically might pay a little higher interest rate as a full-time RVer. That's not always the case. Um, Good Sam does these loans. Sovereign does these loans. I will also put some links below to the banks that will do it for full-timers. Uh, but mo in most cases, to get the best deal on an RV, you want to say, I'm buying it as a recreational vehicle. And then if, if you choose at some point that you're going to stay in it full-time, that's fine. As long as your insurance is correct on the camper, that's the big thing to cover you in the loss. The bank isn't as concerned about that after the fact as long as they're listed as the, the loss payee and you have enough coverage to cover them in the case of a, a in case it gets totaled out. So, you know, those are sort of the ins and outs of it. Um, there's, uh, I see a lot of people online give partial advice, some give good advice, some give bad advice. Um, and I see it all the time. So this is sort of the ins and outs of how it works. If you have any questions, feel free to mess with me. I'd be glad to help you out.